Hello. Nama saya Elina. Saya lahir di Jakarta Pusat. Saya diadopsi oleh orang tua Belanda. Sekarang saya mencari orang tua kandung. Ibu Nurayati dan Bapak Jorik. I thought it was very easy because I have my adoption file and uh, I thought it's very easy to find my biological parents because all the information is in the file but uh, since the information is not correct it's really difficult to But we were shocked that we are involved in this scandal. I was, I'm, was angry, I'm still angry, I will always be angry till that I found out the truth, what happened. Uh, my name is Herlina. Uh, I was born on the 9th of December 1979 in Jakarta Pusat. Uh, so right now I'm 42 years old <laughs> and uh, I live in the Netherlands. I think I knew that I was adopted when I was nine years old and my parents had already told me before but I didn't uh, understand what it, uh, what it meant to be an adoptive child. But of course I noticed that I was different. But other than that, I, I didn't really think about it. That came after uh, when I was a teenager that I really uh, was thinking about it. Uh. I don't know anything about uh, the time that I was living in the Jayasan. I was uh, adopted when I was 10 months old. I was brought to the Jayasan when I was 10 months old. So the time before that, uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, some people said that uh, I lived with uh, some family in that period, but uh, I'm not sure and um, because I don't have any names of the family members that I uh, stayed uh, with. Then in October 1980, uh, I was adopted to the Netherlands. Got the confirmation that the address in my file is not correct, so it's false and nobody knows about my story or my name or the names of my uh, biological parents uh, in that area. I don't have any leads for my search. So, well, the fact that I am adopted, uh, I of course accept it. And now I want to know why and what was the story uh, about my adoption. Now I feel guilty because it feels if I work together with people who are, who are wrong. But, that's another story. This, normally, as an adoption parent, you don't feel guilty because we at once loved Helena. So, and I always thought in my mind, I would like to see her mother and to say how thankful I am that I that she grew up with us. Yeah, to a beautiful woman, and but now the case is turned around in in a scandal. And now I feel very, very um, shocked and also a little bit guilty, yeah. Oma? Yeah? How about Jakarta, Oma? Do uh, you remember something? 
Yeah, I was already once in Jakarta, but it is so Indonesian and uh, yeah, it feels a little bit like home because uh, Alina is coming from this place. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a special feeling. Yes, and for you it's, it was a very long time that she was here. The last time was in 1994. Because um, so, uh, adoption is not um, an, an, a strange subject for me. My mother is an adoption uh, child and um, my sister has adoption children or their house is open for children in need. So I grow up with this subject. So, and I said to my husband, I would like to open the door just for a child, if it is in, Netherlands, in the Netherlands or abroad. And it, it was Indonesian. So that is my personal reason. The process of adoption in the Netherlands is a long, long process. At uh, that time, it took us uh, three years uh, to get all the legal information and uh, from the government. And when you have this information and this, uh, this, this document, then you, uh, they advise you to go to a an, 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 yeah, foundation who is involved in adoption. And um, we um, were with Stichting Kind and Toekomst in the Netherlands and they had connections with, with Indonesia. So at that time they uh, started the process to look for a child. And uh, I think within uh, a year we got a telephone call that uh, Helena was in the orphan house and she was ready for adoption. And at that time, she was already uh, 10 months old. They told us they need adoption parents for the, for the orphan houses. Otherwise, they should stay in this house for when she was 18 years old. So then it's better that she uh, grow up in a family, in my opinion. It was really, really a shock for us to find out at the end what was going on at that time. We had the documents. My husband went to Indonesia for the adoption. Three weeks, he did the legal procedure. He got all the stamps and we thought, this is okay, this is correct. And we had not a clue. Well, of course they accept me for who I am, but they, they think they adopt a child with the name Herlina and the mother's name Nurayati and the father's name uh, Jorik. So they have an image of me as this person and right now they find out that, that it's not correct, but that's uh, different uh, for me as a person. I had a, a period that I was uh, especially angry with my adoptive uh, parents because um, it was very difficult for me when I was a teenager to accept the fact that I was adopted and I didn't know uh, what to do uh, with my feelings also about this. Uh, and actually I kept those feelings to myself. So uh, yeah, that made me also more angry because I couldn't talk to any, uh, anyone to, uh, with it, to it.
for him it's also very difficult because he knows that I am always searching for my identity because I don't actually I don't know who I am I don't maybe have a, a, a correct birth certificate or the, the correct information about my past so he knows that but he's always supporting me in finding uh, who I am. Then, I think it is about four years ago, Zembla, a television station in the Netherlands, they found out that there was an adoption scandal going on at that time. And at the first time, we said to each other, my husband and I, ah, it's other children, it's not our case. And then Manon of Helena found out that she was also involved. And then started the process of supporting her in her search for looking for biological parents or family. And that is a big struggle now. Then we thought, when she will marry and will have a child by her own, maybe that's the point. And that happened. At that point, when the twin was born, there was a kind of explosion with her. And I think um, it is not on me um, to say to Herlina, oh, shall we look for your biological parents? That, that's not an easy question. So, and I asked uh, some information with, with um, people uh, who are involved in this, uh, in this subject. And they told me, just wait till she's coming with the, with the questions. But nice uh, the bus halte, yeah. This is a, a long time ago is birth clinic. Di sebelah kanan adalah klinik bersalin Cideng di tempat Ibu Herlina yang dulu empat eh, tahun yang lalu dilahirkan sekarang sudah berubah menjadi gedung eh, milik pemerintah. Jadi eh, dengan berdasarkan bukti dokumentasi yang ada tahun 1978 kami memulai follow up di hari pertama itu kami pergi ke rumah sakit Bersalin Cideng dan ternyata rumah sakit Bersalin Cideng sudah berubah menjadi kantor BNN untuk wilayah Tanah Abang How about your feeling? Um, it's very different than from uh, in 1994, of course, because now it looks all different. It doesn't look like a bird clinic anymore, so... Uh... Uh, tetap kami datang untuk mencari informasi mengenai uh, dokumentasi kelahiran, tapi yang kami peroleh cukup mengecewakan karena tidak diketahui kemana dokumentasi yang dulu, sehingga ketika terjadi perpindahan kepemilikan, sang penyewa baru pun tidak mengetahui di mana dokumentasi kelahiran tahun 1979 tersebut. This area long time ago is housing for the rich people. Okay. You see the building, old one? Yeah. It's the building for the rich people. Sudah berubah menjadi restoran Sumatera Utara Province. Yeah. That's building. This is the building, but 
It's complete, seperti ini. Completely different, of course. Dan kita tidak menemukan lagi gitu. Kami berkunjung ke rumah Ketua RT 3, RW 3 kalau tidak salah. Itu menjadi tempat yang kami datangi karena tepat berada di Jalan Amber, Jelambar. Nih, Pak Didi. Nah, ini nih. Ini punya dong. Ini saya Nur. Nih, nih, nih. <laughs> nih, apa namanya Didi tapi bukannya Torik. Nah, namanya Nur Hai ini. Sunaryati, Sunaryati. Karena Pak RT sebelumnya adalah orang tua dari Bapak Irawan ini yang RT yang sekarang. Saya anggap datanya sangat valid karena bukti kependudukan di zaman itu juga kita peroleh. Buku-buku di tahun 1975 sampai tahun sekarang lengkap pencatatannya. Melalui itu kami putuskan bahwasanya ada kepastian Herlina bukan berasal dari Amber RT4 RW17. Alamatnya hanya dipakai untuk penulisan dokumen agar proses adopsi ini bisa berjalan lancar. Ini kan 78. Ya. Dibagi jadi berapa nomor dulu, ini begini kali. Tuh, kan ujungnya itu kan yang lu, lu, lu bilang sama tuh. Lain nomornya. Lain, yang ke situ aja udah 70. Ya, ini 78. Nah, ini makanya, nah. saya sih pilih. Tapi saya cuma yakin bentuk atapnya ini loh. This is the picture who uh, the building who I think that same picture with you. Maybe not not many have uh, different renovation. Setelah itu kami mencoba memfollow up ke daerah Saharjo nomor 78. Di Saharjo 78 terkendala karena terjadi perubahan nomor tanpa persetujuan kelurahan. Akhirnya melalui pencarian pribadi saya, saya mendapat informasi bahwasanya kepemilikan rumah tersebut tidak jelas. Waktu itu juga pernah ada orang dari Suriname mau cari orang tuanya ke sini juga. Memang dia pernah ngambil katanya. Ini gedungnya ini ya Pak? Gedungnya ini. Yang mana Pak? Tunjukin saya. Ini pas langsung. That's one. Confirm, same building. Cuma katanya ini alamat ah, nomornya aja salah. Nom the number is not same, but the building yeah. still same. Ini untuk wilayah Kelurahan Manggarai. Ini yang garis kuning ini. Terus sampai di sini jalan Saharjo, jalan raya Saharjo. Nah, kalau untuk lokasi yang dicari itu tadi, ada di seberang sini. Akhirnya saya mencoba memfollow up lingkungan sekitarnya, bertemu dengan kepala, seks, eh, kepala sek, eh, sekretariat 
Desa Manggarai, Pak Didi mengetahui sejarah bangunan Saharjo nomor 78. Di situ e, menceritakan seorang namanya Haji Asep menceritakan bahwasanya memang kepemilikan dahulu adalah kepemilikan dari orang Tionghoa yang merupakan warga negara Australia. Kegiatan tersebut tidak banyak diketahui orang, kepemilikannya juga kemudian menjadi tidak jelas dan yang Tionghoa tersebut kembali ke Australia. Nah, ketika ditinggali oleh orang Tionghoa tersebut, saat itulah terjadi banyak adopsi dari warga negara luar terhadap bayi-bayi yang dibawa dari berbagai tempat, termasuk Herina ini. Ya, because they have renovation. Jadi untuk kasus Herlina, saya anggap tingkat kesulitannya yang sangat tinggi. Alamat tidak jelas, saksi tidak ada. Dari cerita yang saya peroleh ini, gitu, ada sebuah garis merah. Sepertinya untuk Herlina, itu kita banyak menemukan jalan buntu. Very disappointed, of course. Uh, you always Uh, keep this in the back of your mind that it's the chances are so small to find your biological family because if you don't have the correct information then you should hope for a miracle Saya mencari orang tua kandung, Ibu Nurayati dan uh, Bapak Jorek. Silakan, bantu saya, oke? Okay? I keep searching, I think, uh, until the end. Oma, semangat terus. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak. She's such a wonderful woman. I hope that she will find rest in her head. Because it will always be with her, walk with her during the day, during the night. And if she finds some biologic, biological family, it gives a little bit rest. And otherwise, yeah, we will see uh, how it will develop in future. <laughs>